she burst onto the music scene in 2003 with her first album, Frank, just 20 years old, but already clearly a future star with an incredible voice. I've been able to do exactly what I want to do. I just do what I love, you know, and I'm, I'm lucky that I have been able to do that, and please God that I will be able to do that. Heartbreak provided the material for her next album, the bestseller, Back to Black. I've had to just be like, write everything down, you know, even feelings that I don't want to acknowledge, especially feelings I don't want to acknowledge and things that I wish were not true and they are. And you know, it's just good because someone else might hear that and be like, I'm not an idiot for feeling those things. It's never safe for us. The album won multiple awards and catapulted Amy to international stardom. But being so celebrated, so much in the spotlight, still aged just 23, brought its own pressures. I'm quite a insecure person. I'm very insecure about how I look. So, I mean, I'm a musician, I'm not a model. So I just remember turning up at BBC or places like that. And the more insecure I felt, the more I'd drink. She was a magnet for media attention. On top of drinking and ongoing relationship difficulties were added an eating disorder and drug use, all played out in public. You come here full of crack. <laughs> <laughs> God. Spitting all over things. Let it die, please. Let it die, please. The addiction I'd like to die. Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> you back. This isn't even a pop quiz anymore. It's an intervention, Amy. <laughs> For you, Amy. <laughs> Step away from the Chardonnay. <laughs> Amy eventually quit the drugs, but her other addiction and health problems derailed her touring career and caused her death from accidental alcohol poisoning at the age of just 27. So yeah, we're, we're here to talk about Amy Winehouse, um, who said, I remember her saying, I'm not, I'm not a girl trying to be a star, I'm just a girl that sings. Um, and I wondered, you know, we've gathered you all here um, for your brilliance in your own right as artists, but also for your thoughts on Amy. And, and Ray, for you, did she have an influence on you as a, as a young artist? Do you think she paved the way for someone like you? Definitely. As a songwriter, she inspired me a lot. Um, I think what I loved most was her realness and her rawness with her lyrics and also how London-centric they were. Her lyrics, they reference things that you wouldn't understand if you weren't from here. And um, for me, that felt relatable. And also, I just loved the, the frankness of, of how she would put yeah. her words. Um, so as, as a lyricist myself, that gave me the courage to say things exactly how I felt and not worry about it having to um, reach a wide audience and for everybody to understand me. I'm writing about where I'm from and who I am and my experiences. And that definitely came from hearing someone like her. So you, you're nodding here, Monsieur. No, I totally agree. I think. Um, just everything about her, her style itself, you know, she opened up a lot of doors for a lot of people. And, um, and she spoke about a lot of things that a lot of people wasn't speaking about too. Um, yeah, it's just a realness, really. I think everyone just enjoyed her. And Wendy, for you, from afar, what was your sense of Amy? She, she was very different. I used to take far more happiness in seeing her on television than, a, you know, a lot of normal pop stars because she was so brave and fearless and beautiful and hilarious. She was so funny. And then, of course, her natural talent on stage and singing in the studio and her music. Everything about her, she was, she was the real deal, wasn't she? She was the whole thing. And what was it about her music that resonated so much with you? The soul. The way she could deliver on stage. You know, you could feel the gravitas come up through her, the pain and the joy and the life experience coming through that microphone. And Estelle, you are a contemporary of Amy's. What what are your memories yeah. of her? Well, I remember seeing her like at all the different open mics and performing at the same places. And then, you know, we would see each other like via an awards and we got like moments of, I can't believe we're doing this, <laughs> you know? And see each other's crew and still be like, holy crap, it's us, <laughs> we're up here, you know? 
that kind of energy, which was beautiful, but also it was, you know, like we come from London and there's a certain energy that goes with that. What was it like to, you know, see this person from afar, be inspired by them, start thinking, you know, I want to, I, I want to do that, I can do that, you know, to, 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 to experience that and then see what happened and sort of watch her journey. What was that like for you? You know what, it's really heartbreaking as a fan of someone to watch them be um, attacked or feel like they're not protected mm -hmm. or, or watch their demise in whatever way that is. It definitely was heartbreaking for me, um, but I also was really young, so I didn't understand it. All I knew was she's always in the press or on telly mm -hmm. and it's always really negative. Yeah. And for me, I just, I just always remember her looking like frail and scared and trying to run away and I felt like oh my god stop that's my hug. friend you know what I mean yeah. um I I just felt yeah I felt that um she needed to be protected and, and yeah. I, yeah and I didn't understand really what was going on but I knew that it wasn't um it wasn't right yeah in Amy's case was she being supported enough by whether it's friends family the music business whoever it was was she getting enough support should she have been on those stages um, where, where does the fault lie I was frustrated, like I was calling and texting and DMing people I knew that were around there, like, yo, this isn't it. Like, why, why is she on stage? What's going on? Like, what, what's happening? I was purely angry, like living in that space and knowing what goes into the day to day of, you know, like touring and moving around and being on stage and really not having anyone to protect you, but also having to try and protect yourself and then you can't protect yourself sometimes. It was it was frustrating. It was it was I was I was I was angry. Wendy, yeah, you, know, you were first of these four to um, be super famous. What what are the pressures? Can you paint a picture of what it's like to suddenly be catapulted into the spotlight in the way that you were, in the way that all of you have been, and certainly in the way that Amy was? I was famous, uh, very famous, 30, 25 years ago, thirty years ago. After we've all accrued a certain amount of fame, there are two different personalities there's the private people that we all are and then there's an almost unrelatable media version of that person and with enough fame then that just becomes its own truth and people start to think that's what you are and that's who you are and then they judge you accordingly because I know how much my band looks after me interventions are so difficult from parents or record labels and if you die, then they can sell more records. Mm -hmm. yeah. I agree. Oh my goodness, this shocks me. You're all saying you agree yeah. to that. That is shocking. You better did. What does that tell you, Estelle? I'm grateful that I had a sense of self and that I was able to like pull it back. Mm. You know, like when it got to a point where I felt like nobody cared and it was tears for days on end and then walk on stage and sing. I do think that as an artist, because the pressure of just getting energy out of nowhere, to be the best performer suddenly and also to just be on the go constantly and not get tired and fly here and fly there and just be switched on constantly. I think you're more likely to look for something to give you strength or energy or feel confident and that's where the dependency comes in. And, and for you, Ray, would you think that if you were in her situation now, it would be different? I've heard people speak about people that have actually even passed from an overdose in a way of them being a commodity and giving them drugs to fuel them because that's what they need to get on stage. And it's like, well, he has a tour and so he needs to go on tour, he needs to get on stage, otherwise we're gonna lose money. So if it takes giving him drugs to get on stage, I've got to do what I've got to do and that's part of my job. And you and, know that's happening, that's happening. And I know that's happening and, um, and I'm, I'm sure that if I was somebody who used drugs and I said I needed it to do something, it probably would be supplied to me. I think there are a lot of artists that, you know, unfortunately they don't have a team around them that are as supportive or, um, you know, wary and careful and probably would be supplied these things or even um, maybe even told to, to drink more to get on stage or to be able to, to work properly. And Wendy, what were the pressures back then for you? No, no manager or label said to us, all take a year off, spend some of the money you've made, have a nice life. And then when you feel like making music again, come back to the studio and see what you come up with.
In the end, Transvision Vamp literally split up because we were exhausted. There wasn't any particular um, row within the band or a dead end. We were burnt out. I mean, I just remember being in, you'll know Stel being in LA, the Holiday Inn on Highland Avenue and just yeah. smashing, smashing that room up and screaming. Sometimes that works. Sometimes that's counseling. <laughs> Sometimes that's how it, you get it. You know, and screaming, you don't care about me. You don't care about me. And um, and the only way to keep on working was to drink, to do not. I'm not saying drop down drunk, but just to numb it out. I was lucky enough to have my first manager actually recommend that I see a therapist because he was like, you know, I I recognise that being an artist can be quite difficult, and I think you should just speak to someone about how you're feeling, especially because I was struggling with anxiety getting on stage at the time because of all of the pressure and the people. Um, but I don't think that's um, I don't think that's something that you see often. Um, and even then, he was the only person that ever yes. what, that one time asked. <laughs> you know, maybe you should get talk to somebody. You know, people don't ask, "Are you okay?" They just think you just get on with it. I'm very happy, Ray, that your manager said you should see a therapist. I think everybody should have a therapist. But to me, it speaks to the change in the whole world's mindset, mm. which is a great thing. And it speaks to the change in the way that people are viewing artists and looking at us as real people versus you're lucky to do this extraordinary thing. You get to do it better than us. Don't complain. Mm, yeah. You know, don't, you know, yeah. it's like, oh, you're actually human too. And when it comes to Amy Winehouse, I mean, the cruelty of it is horrendous. When we look at it now from a sen the perspective of somebody struggling with addiction, I wonder whether you think that that is something, you know, we wouldn't... The media wouldn't treat somebody like that now. We have more compassion for addiction than we did and more understanding, or do you think it's just as bad as it ever was? I've had a million and one things written about me. It's the worst. I think there's obviously your privacy. I mean, it all depends, again, you know, how I dealt with my, my stuff when people were talking a whole bag of shit. It was... I felt like I was literally sinking. I felt like my whole world was crumbling. I, I kept my myself in my house for like, you know, weeks on. Didn't want to see daylight. <clears throat> and then naturally I had to get myself, pull myself together. And that's only purely because I have great people around me. But um, I think, you know, you just definitely, cancelling, therapy, all of that shit is so important. It does make sense. Do you think social media puts extra pressures on young women or is it just people generally? Um, definitely a lot more pressure on women than men, primarily because it is all about looking good. But I think the, the difference now with social media, where it wasn't so prevalent before, is that now you can actually see what people have to say about you. So when it was just the press, it's whoever's written that thing about you that's attacking you or having their opinion on you. But now you can see thousands of people saying what's in their head and that's just not natural we shouldn't be able to hear each other's thoughts that i think is the problem with social media now whether it's commenting on a woman's weight or her looks or her love life um or anything in between i think that's where it gets very difficult so so um yeah if we bring it back to amy um for the end what do you think her legacy is her legacy is that she's will always be thought of as a beautiful human being that had a fiery soul who expressed the truth, her, the real truth, her truth all the time. And what else she has left is for, for the rest of us living is that, again, what we've all said, is that you learn to find a way to take care of yourself and be your own counsel. Whether you're famous or not, that's essential in life anyway, if you're gonna live a, a whole life I think everyone understands her now, which is, on, you know, which is nice because if, I think people have got to know who she is, even though it's been 10 years now, who she was then. Um, it's a shame she's not here today, but I think, yeah, for me, I just, just, she's just iconic and, you know, her music will always live. You know, if, if nothing else, if we take away all the media hype around da 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 da, -da and we just see a picture of her, I'm going to know the lyrics to her songs. I'm going to know the melodies to her music. So good lyrics and great melodies and the truth will always push through. Well, thank you so much. I mean, 10 years on from Amy's death, you have all really done her proud. So thank you very, very thank much. You. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you.